Hi, everybody. Uh, I was hoping I could be frank with you guys today. So, hello. My name is Frank. Okay. Funny joke. Anyway, today is the last day of the ED tour, and I'm out here in the heat of McCungie, Pennsylvania. Now, we're exciting, and we're going to go over some points. First point is I want you guys to detach yourself from the emotional factor. Emotionally detach yourself when doing presentations. Go in cool, leave cool. If they hate you, they love you, they don't want to do it, they want to do it, whatever happens, come in cool, leave cool, okay? Just emotionally detached. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the presentation. They're saying no to the, the opportunity. They're saying no to the knowledge that you just gave them. Be it, be an educator, okay? Be a farmer, which means you're going to build relationships. You're going to educate, not the hunter who attacks. So if we can become emotionally detached, this business gets so much easier. It's all mind over matter. I mean, think about it. If I go into a presentation and I get really mad because they didn't want to do it, I, I, I ruin my day. I ruin my chances of succeeding. I ruin my relationship with the people that I just showed it to. But if I say, okay, you know what? Not a big deal. I planted a seed and move on to the next person, okay? Also, be more interested than interesting. So I want to be more interested in the person I'm talking to. I want to know what their wants are, what their needs are, how I can help them rather than, you know, what kind of car I have or how many awards I've won and stuff like that. You know, uh, I'm a consultant. I'm not an expert. My goal is to ask a lot of questions and find out, you know, what's going on in their mind. What do they need? And at the end of the presentation, some good questions to ask is not what did you think? I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you say, what did you think? It opens up a huge can of worms for negativity. Do not say that. And I've been guilty of saying that myself. But I want you guys to say stuff like, did that make sense? Question mark. Pretty exciting, right? Question mark. And what's the best one is, what did you like best about it? Now, they're going to think. And they're going to give you something positive about it. And then you can work off of that. We're going to go through a lot of notes here. Let me let me, let me me just go through some things here. Um, here is a great way, guys. Uh, and I want you to use this four-part system. Um, four-part system every time every time you're about to show a presentation if you use this four-part system I guarantee you the results will be greater than what you're having right now here's what you want to do you ask the question on a part-time basis how much money would you need to make to make an to make a new uh, an opportunity worth your while like how much money would you like uh, and then they're gonna give you an answer okay so for me you asked me so George uh, you know I'm about to show you this opportunity but I have a question for you, you know how much uh, on a part-time basis what are you willing you know uh, uh, how much money are you willing? How much money? Let me see here. What do I have? I think I went up too far. How much money would you like to make in a month to make it worth your while? So, George, how much money would you like to make in a month to make this business worth your while? I'm about to show you. Well, I'd like to make about two thousand dollars a month. Okay, let me ask you this: How many hours a month could you work to make that happen? Well, I could put in about two hours a week, so eight hours a month. Okay, so you want to make two thousand dollars a month, and you want to work eight hours a month, right? Correct. Okay. Now, how many months are you willing to do that to, to have an income residually that comes like that? Well, you know, I'm willing to do it for like 12 months. Okay. And the last question is if I could show you a way to make $2,000 a month with eight hours a month for 12 months, would you be ready to get started? They're going to say yes. And you say, well, let me show you the plan. Okay, guys, you just put in perspective their expectations okay now if they say I want to make ten thousand dollars a month you know what I say to them listen I'm gonna be honest with you from the hours that you want to put into it and for the months you want to do it your expectations are too high I can't help you right now so either come you can either you know come back with different expectations or be willing to put more time into it but really I, I can't help you till then you got to have realistic expectations for these people and if you if you guide them with those four questions how much money do you want to make in a month how many hours a month are you willing to put into it how many months are you willing to do it if I could show you uh, an opportunity right now with that you know that criteria uh, and I could help you earn that money are you ready to get started that's awesome system guys four part system right there okay um, Remember, unrealistic number they give you. You're their consultant. You're 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 the educator. You're gonna you're gonna consult them. Hey, I I, I gotta let you know that you're not gonna be able to make ten thousand dollars a month with only eight hours. You're probably gonna need sixteen. Are you willing to do that? Because if you're willing to do that, hey, I can get you ten thousand dollars a month. Okay, so um, this will help. This will help people that are too. There's too many people out there thinking and not taking action. Okay, uh, they're just thinking about the opportunity, but they're not taking action. This will actually help that hurdle. Uh, the fortune is in the follow-up, guys. Guys, I'm telling you right now, amateur network marketers attack one person, and they say no, and they let them go. Okay, the pros educate one person, and over a series of many times, they keep keep following up. That's the only way. Most people do not sign up in a business until four to six exposures. Okay, so let's get to my notes here. Um, following up is doing what you said you would do. So I, I recommend you guys use an electronic calendar or some form of a calendar. And if you tell somebody you're going to follow up with them three days later after the presentation, you're going to call them three days later, you're going to email them three days later, make sure you do it because people will respect you. They'll respect the fact that you, you kept your word. And that's very, very, very important. Okay. Uh, what do you think, again, is a horrible way to ask a question. It's it's 
our only objective, guys, is um, is, is to show the plan, right? So we are showing them, we are exposing them. It's called exposure. We're exposing them to our plan. Our goal is not to sign them up. Our goal is to have another exposure. Every exposure should lead to another exposure. So when I asked those questions earlier, pretty exciting, right? Um, what else did I say here? Pretty exciting, right? What did you like? And did it make sense? Now, they're going to give you some objections, okay? They're going to say some stuff like, uh, well, they're going to say, yes, it makes sense. If they say that, um, what you do is you invite them back to another opportunity to see to see you know what to see it again and then the more they see it the stronger it gets in their mind the stronger bond you you make with them as a friend so if you show the presentation to somebody three times a webinar or let's just say a corporate meeting uh, a hotel another hotel meeting uh, a home meeting every time you hang out with them your relationship gets stronger you get more bonded you get more trust they learn more okay so Think about it. Every time you go to show the plan, you know you got to be patient. You're, a lot of us go in there. We want to sign up on the first try. No, you want to get them to be exposed, and then expose them again, and then expose them again. And that will build a bond. And most people need a couple times to go. Now, if they say, the, the, here is, um, okay, they said that it's not, um, it's not for them, right? Like you know, well, I don't, I don't like it, or, or you know what? Uh, first of all, I want you not to get annoyed. Okay, um, I don't want you to get annoyed because. You're going to kill it right there. You're never going to be able to get this person back on your team. But I want you guys, if they have any objections, though, to find out what that objection is. And I want you to work with that objection. So if it's like, you know, they don't understand the compensation plan or they're not really uh, sure if they have the time or they really have this, whatever it is, you want to focus on that part. And then when you re revisit them, go over that part. Or for anything they liked, go back over that part again. Okay. What do I have here? Um, Here's, here's a great, great, great way um, to finish up uh, the close. So we, we did the four-part system, right? Now we show them the business plan. We ask them a couple of questions. You know, is it exciting? Blah, blah, blah. Boom. They say yes. Now, here's what you got to say. And when you ask them what they like best, you're leading them to a positive direction. Here's what I would say. On a one to ten, what is your interest in this business? They're probably going to say a five or six, okay? That's probably normal. Now, here's what you ask them. How can I get you to a higher number? How can I get you to an eight, nine, or ten? What would it take? What do you think, you know, and what do you think is horrible? Just get their mind to work in a critical way. Oh, when you say what you think, that's horrible. It gets their mind thinking in a, in a negative, critical way. So you're going to ask them on a one to ten, where do you see yourself, uh, you know, interested in this business? Okay, a five or six. Well, what can I do to help you get to a higher point? Well, you know, I really want to understand the residual better, or I really want to understand the three and ten better, or I really want to be around some people who've actually succeeded, or I want to see this, and, and that's where you go from there, okay? Four to six exposures is f common for somebody to join, okay? If you hammer on people once and never follow up, you ruin relationships. If you can't educate them, you cannot educate people on one exposure, guys. It's impossible. More exposures educate more. They strengthen friendships. They uh, Some of the best people in network marketing have been prospected for years. I was prospected for years, not by this company, not by our company. But for eight years, I've been prospected by every single network marketing company you could think of. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then one day I said, yes, okay? Think about that, all right? Uh, what else we got here? Fast exposure gives the best chance to join. Otherwise, it's like starting all over. So if you if you contact somebody and you expose them to the plan, and then you wait six months or five months or three months, guys, it's basically like starting all over again. So it's really a, a short window. You want to you wanna basically get in there like on a Monday, on a Wednesday, on a Friday, on the next Wednesday, and get them in those three or four exposures back-to-back, -back, conference call, webinar, upline call. You know, take them to a meeting, and, and that really allows them in a short period of time to be, you know, exposed to so much information that they can, you know, justify their decision of deciding to do the business. Okay, um, defensive or offensive? Don't be defensive and don't be offensive. Okay, our job is to educate, not to get defensive or not to be too offensive. Our job is only to educate. Um, they're blind spots. Okay. Um, these are the blind spots people have. These are the, the, the reservations they have. They have a limited belief in themselves. They have a limited belief um, in this opportunity will help them. Um, and the best way to do this is to share your story. That's the only way to overcome that. People, when they're sitting there and they're done, they're going to have a, a, a lack of confidence in themselves, a lack of confidence that this is the answer. And the only thing you can do is what I call feel felt found, which is basically, you know, uh, you know, the way they feel. And then you felt the same way, but you found out this kind of that story. So what that means is if somebody tells me, you know, George, I don't really have the time or, you know, I'm afraid that I, I might not be able to trigger my first check or, you know, I'll, I'll give them my story or I'll give them a story of somebody. I'll say, you know, I know exactly how you feel. My buddy who's in this business had the exact same feeling or, and, and basically it's your story, you know, and now you bond and they realize, well, you had, you had the same issue if they, you know, and if you got through it, they can get through it. Okay. And it's a bonding experience, guys. So when people have these blind spots, what's really holding them back, you need to don't be defensive and don't be offensive, okay? You want to just really 
focus on that particular issue they're having and, and find a story either from yourself or somebody in your organization that can relate to that story and help that person understand that there's a way to get past that, okay? Some of the excuses we talk about uh, a lot is people say they don't have time, uh, they don't have the money, they don't know anyone, they're not a salesperson, uh, uh, you know, these are the kind of a lot of the excuses we get here. What do I, I wrote something here? Um, so here's what I say here. I wrote here, say I had some, okay, so here you talk about the same challenges you had, you know, but make them think about the future and how it helped you, okay? If you really think this would help you, would you, could you find a way? So, so, so say, okay, I know you don't have any money. Um, and guys, don't, don't, don't say stuff like, well, you know, go, I mean, I've done it too. Well, let's go sell your TV. I mean, we joke around, right? But honestly, like, you know, if you tell somebody, well, you keep that up, you know, you're going to keep that up. You're going to be broke forever. You're going to go back to your job and be broke forever. I mean, it's probably only going to upset them. The, the best way to put it is probably to say, something like um um probably like uh, more of like well you know i understand uh that um you know you don't have the money to do it but could you imagine life what life would be like if you know you continue to have to to feel that way um this is an opportunity where if you believe in it you know i mean do you believe in it yeah i believe in it well don't you think you, if you really believe in it, you can figure out a way to make it work so we can try to change that circumstance in your life be more understanding okay also we get a lot of this uh is it one of those things one of those pyramid things okay here's 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 the mistake that all of us have made and i have made well the government's a pyramid um you know or um you're the bottom of your pyramid or we get defensive we talk smack right but here's something that i just learned that is brilliant brilliant guys okay so when they ask you if it's first of all um when when, when they ask you if it's been a pyramid the first thing um uh, uh I'll say is pyramid schemes are illegal and I would never do anything illegal. Let them know your ethics, okay? But second of all, guys, for them to think it's a pyramid scheme or one of those things, they probably got involved in a multi-level marketing business, okay? Or they probably know somebody who did or they, you know, they got involved and had like that lottery factor where they thought it was a scratch-off ticket. So they joined thinking that they were going to make all this money, okay? And so when you when they say that, what does that mean? That means they have a story. They have a story behind that thought. And you, instead of getting defensive and talking smack about the other stuff, you need to find out what their story is. Say, hey, you know what? Wait a minute. You know, for you to say that, that you, you must have a story, right? Tell me about it. I mean, did you do something before in network marketing or do you know somebody who did? Okay. Now, that, so here's what I wrote down. You, they have a, That means they have a, tell them they, they have a story. Get their story. This will bond you, okay? Ask them why they failed. Ask them, why did you fail? Did you give it a fair shot? Uh, was it multi-level marketing? Uh, was it was it the, was it multi-level marketing or was it the timing? Well, they're, and they're probably gonna say it was the timing, but you gotta get them to think that because in their mind they had a bad experience. Like they probably sold something and didn't work out. So now they're like, oh, it's one of those things. And you're like, well, hold on a second. Can I can I share your story? Can you share your story with me? They share the story. You bond. Okay. Now you ask them, why do you think you failed? Well, you know, I really didn't have a leader or you know uh, it was hard to sell the product because of the fact that uh, you know there was a lot of them around or they're going to give you a story guys okay and then you have to ask them did you give it a fair shot you know or was it the actual business model and they're going to say you know I didn't give it a fair shot okay and that is great because now you bond it now they're going to go past that um, and again let them know you know you don't do you don't do the legal things um, then you have people who will say, well, you know, I love it, but I don't want to bother my friends. This is when you ask them, let me ask you something. If you believed in a product in life or you believed you had the answer to uh, something that could help a lot of people, would you feel like you're bothering them? Make them realize that if they believe in, in what we do and they believe in what we have, they're not going to be bothering people. Okay, Just put it in their in their mind. So they might ask you how much money have you made. Um, if you've made a lot of money, let them know. But if you haven't made a lot of money, let them know that you're doing this on a part-time basis, very minimal. You've received compensation you've you know made your money back you've made a little bit of money but you you're only doing it part time and you're just very 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 excited about this company's future and where you see the future of yourself with this company let them see that vision okay it doesn't matter if you didn't make a lot of money but let them know that you are excited with the company that where you're going to be going okay um Yeah, people spend a lot of time uh, getting associates and then they squander it by not guiding them, okay? So you, I, you should have a game plan interview each time. Every time you sponsor somebody, guys, you should make a, an appointment to sit down with them for 30 minutes to validate their choice, you know, how, and explain to them how it will help their life and how things will be now different for them and their family and congratulate them and be, tell them that you're proud of them for taking charge of their life. And then you want to set their expectations. This is the important part. This will create success, uh, uh, you know, or failure because you got to let them know, listen, like it's bold, but you got to say, listen, I want to let you know that, you know, you're in charge of 
of your success here. You are in charge of your failure, not me. I'm here to guide you, but you're in charge of your success or failure, okay? The difference between success and failure is going to be basically on what you want to do with this business, okay? I'm here not to work for you, but I'm here to work with you, okay? Um, you know, it, 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 my job is to make you as independent as fast as possible. Does that sound good to you? So you're letting them know, like it's, you know, you're making them aware that it's their business, you know, otherwise they're going to, they're going to, you're telling them why well, I work for you. I don't get a check until you get a check. Oh, that's fine. But now they realize that you said that you set the tone already that you're basically their, you know, uh, that you're working for them and it's all on you. And, okay. And it's better to do it the other way around, guys. Set those expectations early. Let them know that everything falls and rises on them. If they want to succeed, it's them. If they want to fail, it's them. You're, you're their consultant. You're there to guide them. Okay. But the difference is between failing and success is on them. Okay, I let them know there will be ups and downs, and I will know when you're in one of them because you're not going to contact me that much. Let them know that we expect that already of them, and let them know ahead of time. Ask them this question, very important: What would you like me to do in those times where I don't hear from you when I think you're having a bad week in this business? Would you like me to leave you alone, or would you like me to be persistent and remind you why you started this business? Now you've asked them, and now when they get to that mood where they're not contacting you because something's going on in their life, you know to either leave them alone, or you know you can be persistent and remind them because they told you what to expect. Set those expectations. This is a great way to get off to a great start, okay? Uh, getting started checklist. Also then, get their app set up. Get, get them to understand where the videos are. Get them to understand where the website events are, where the meetings are going to be, okay? Um, have them understand... Uh, the points of the business model and how they can actually, you know, how their money is going to increase and as they grow. And let them know, you know, a brief overview of the compensation plan. Make sure they understand that. Make sure they understand how they can get their first customer. Make sure they can get their first associate. Make sure they understand how they can get their first check. Make sure they can understand where the first meeting is going to be at and then set that first meeting. These are all things you should do in a half hour period and a separate meeting after you personally sponsor your new associate. Okay. A lot of people just crave direction. Uh, it's very simple. Simple assignments with deadlines. And, and you'd be amazed what people do. They crave that in their life. Uh, so you just want to get them over that line, of, that, that line, guys. There's a line right here. Success, failure. Failure is no check. Success is first check. If you can get them onto that side of the line, you have a better chance of getting them to completely be uh, successful and stay su successful for the rest of uh, our you know, existence doing this business. Now, uh, meetings. Uh, to make to make money network marketing, guys, you got to go to meetings, bottom line. Uh, the tools are great, but the meetings are more important. Uh, for us, our main event every year is uh, the biggest event in February. you got to go to that, okay? All the top earners use that to grow their business. Uh, it's in a total immersion for a few days away from the reality of life, the reality of bills and stress and kids and whatever else is going on. It's a whole week of just focusing on your dreams. It's validation, seeing others there, positive peer pressure, people seeing people get awards. I saw you know people getting awards on stage and I said, I'm not coming back here next year without an award. I'm not coming back out here next year without doing better. It those that positive peer pressure helped me out, okay? Um and the event has uh, tons of people who, who, who think just like we do and, and they have the same beliefs and the same dreams. And that gives us strength for the next the next push towards our next goal. So those big events like tonight, it's huge going to something like that. Okay. You know, uh, last year, you know, let's just say, let's just say you go, you go to a big event for the company and there's 2000 people in that room. I can tell you right now, a year from now, only a thousand will be back. I'm going to tell you a thousand will be back with that thousand that comes back. I can promise you this, their income will be double the average of the people that were in that room the year before okay the next year out of those thousand that made it the next year only 500 are going to come back but i can promise you this those 500 that come back their income is going to be four times larger than it was a year ago the average okay and could think about who keeps outlasting it's all about outlasting this business outlasting it. those who outlast will feel like iron men or iron women because they'll know that wow i outlasted this business i outlasted these people it's a pretty amazing feeling guys um if you have to share a room, if you have to have no room service, if you have to have no no mini bar, don't. Just make it to the events. Find the money to get out there and, and share a room with 10 people if you have to, okay? Uh, outlast. Be committed. Um, and if somebody's trying to, you know, tell you they can't make it to an event, don't buy their excuses, guys, okay? I don't buy people's excuses. Help them understand the importance of the event. Help them brainstorm a way that they can they can make it there and share your story. Do not buy their story about they can't make it, okay? Um, it's crazy. People start this business. They want their money back in the first month. But yet traditional businesses, it takes a year to break even, and it takes five years to get your initial investment back. I mean, it's crazy. But yet they expect it to be totally different in the first month, okay? They want their money back in the first month. They want a profit in the second month. They want to be rich in the third month. That doesn't, that, it seems like the the traditional business rules don't apply, uh, but we have a better way, guys. And, and we don't, but we don't sell magic beans. So, if you make money and you don't grow as a person, you will be back to the money level that you were. Meaning, 
if you get lucky and make some thousands of dollars really quick in this business and you haven't personally developed, you're going to go right back to the income level that you deserve. When I started making $6,000 a month, I said to myself, I don't, I'm not a $6,000 a month guy. Me? Heck no. I don't even know what it's like to make that kind of money. And if I didn't start reading books and if I didn't start producing a better me, guess what would have happened? My income would have started to go back down to what I deserved, okay? So I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how much success you have, you will only make as much money as you grow. I'm telling you guys right now, people don't listen to me. I text somebody today, I said, listen, you need to show up to grow up. You need to start plugging in. He goes, well, I can't find any more people to um, approach. I said, I didn't ask you about approaching people. I told you to come and grow. How are you going to approach people? You don't have the technique to do it. You got to stay, you got to get around people that know how to approach people. You have to use the laws that we teach. So um, there is a one, three, five, seven rule, guys, in network marketing. Basically what that means is... Um, uh, by the way, uh, reading those books and stuff will create your wealth on your own rather than having to uh, wait for uh, luck or timing, okay? We don't want to wait for luck or timing. We want to create it on our own. But the one-year rule is this. It takes one year in this business to become confident and profitable to cover all expenses. At least one year in most most businesses. Ours is a little bit less because our expenses are not that. We don't have any products and we don't have anything like that. But one year, okay? And one year to learn. It takes one year just to get yourself going. So we have these people that are doing great things in three months. But really, guys, the first year is a learning experience, okay? Year three, with a part-time effort, you should be able to do this business full-time, meaning you will not have to do your nine to five anymore, realistically speaking. Three years. Five years with a consistent effort, guys, you can make six to seven figures in a business like ours. In seven years, you're a complete expert. Complete, complete expert, um, and that's not bad for seven years part time. Okay, any any profession, um, you know, these people are doing uh, it takes years and years to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, you know, to be an expert in any field. It takes a lot of time. Okay, so think about that. We, yeah, you can do a lot faster. Uh, I did a lot faster, but you got to just make sure that you continue to grow as a person so you can continue to have that success for many, many years, okay? Uh, the best way to learn is to be an active student, always growing and learning, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm teaching. And as I'm teaching, I'm constantly saying it to myself. So when you teach, you're actually learning yourself because you're constantly going over the stuff. Um, you're either growing or dying in this world, guys, and uh, I'm constantly growing, okay? I listen to at least one to two or three books a month, depending on the month, sometimes three, sometimes two, sometimes one. Um don't let people distract you in network marketing. There's a lot of new network marketing things that are popping up. The like next greatest invention, next greatest vitamin. Do not let them interfere with your success. Block all that out, okay? Uh, and if you are struggling with something like talking to new people or making phone calls or or uh, trying to approach a customer, practice that, okay? Practice that. Um, practice what you're struggling with, okay? Don't be afraid how you're going to look uh, when you're doing this. Uh, but I want you to be, don't be scared of well, what, what am I going to look like when I try to call somebody if I'm nervous? I'd rather have you be scared of what life's going to be like if you don't call them and be nervous, okay? Um, what else? Just keep sharp and top of the game, and uh, that's about it there. Um, you can't fight the law of people that you hang out with. Guys, you're an average of the five people you hang out with the most. Let me tell you, I don't want to overwhelm you and tell you have to get rid of your five friends, but every six months in life, somebody moves, something happens, something changes. There's always one spot in that five, that wheel that goes away. So six months from now, when you lose that one friend because he moved to like Alaska, just think really, really hard who you want to substitute in that circle, okay? And every time somebody falls out, think about who you want to substitute in that circle, okay? And, and trust me, you're going to surround yourself with five great people. You're going to learn a lot, okay? All my friends are top earners, okay? They all work hard. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, to be a top earner, you got to work hard. you got to work hard. Uh, I'm not saying we, we have an amazing life and we love what we do. We worked hard, okay? Freedom is not free. It, it takes work. Um, and some quit when and when they realize they had to put work into it. So, I, you know, I realized I had to put work into it and I didn't quit. Um, and we're creating a career, okay? We're creating a career, a career with a, an income that's amazing. You know, uh, a doctor has a high level of skill, but we have it simpler. And we, we make as much or more money with less time to put into it, okay? And most doctors will tell you, they, 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 if we did it all over again, it wouldn't be worth it. So, um, to be a doctor, you got to have money usually to go to school. You got to have connections. You got to have intelligence. Um, uh, we don't need that all, guys. We have the best ratio in investment in ever in any business in the world because our investment's so small. We can make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for our simple investment, and we can also start ripples. It's like throwing a rock in a lake, and we can watch ripples go across the lake. We might only see two or three of them, but those ripples keep going on and on and on and on, changing thousands and thousands of lives. Um, so, um, basically, uh, network marketing, uh, great friendships uh, in areas that last a lifetime in different parts of the country. Uh, we get to travel, which is amazing. When you retire, what do you want to do? 
do you want to travel well get to travel now okay and you will have the time and money to do that if you continue this business you'll have the time and money to travel you'll have the time and money to uh, support uh, you know uh, nonprofit organizations or, or give back or spend more time with them and guys as this company grows it's gonna grow to other countries to other states think about it as you're supporting this company you're gonna get to go into those areas I mean think about it if like they open up like um, let's say uh, Canada well awesome we're gonna go to Canada we're gonna do meetings in Canada we're gonna have fun in Canada we're gonna see Montreal we're gonna see Quebec it's gonna be an awesome life okay and uh, what else we got here um, uh, I have here inspire others with your influence it will change your life to get to the oh meaning once you have power in this business and you're a top leader you can influence other people too to get involved in causes that are better for the world okay um, this business is basically uh, an, incub an, incub an incubation, guys, for personal growth. It's going to teach us how to overcome our fears, how to grow stronger, how to solve problems, how to free our minds, uh, how to uh, how to uh, put positive uh, things in our minds, and how to protect our mind from negative things. And we're going to learn how to lead others too. Okay, I want to finish off with saying uh, the the greatest benefit is not what you what we will get, but what we need to become to get what we want. Okay, so the greatest benefit is not what you will get from this. Uh, but what you will need to become to get what you want, okay? Uh, 25 minutes, you know, uh, I'm going to put this together in a workshop and uh, uh, do it in slides and actually start doing a training session. This is the first time I'm going over it. Uh, it's a long video, but if you made it this far, you're serious about this business and uh, you probably got a lot of good information, guys. I'll see you tonight and uh, let's keep doing great things. It's a great life. Uh, we are... Uh, Growing, growing, growing as people. And uh, we're going to change our lives and the lives of everybody we touch from here on. And uh, our children, our relatives, our friends, it's, it's going to be amazing. Take care.